You are listening to Quarters and Barra. I am Glenn Quartermain, Chief Sports Reporter for the West Australian. With me is Adrian Barrich of Channel 7 Perth Football Club fame. How are you, Barra? I'm good, mate. Really good. A friend, a friend of Jordan Clark. And so I've been in there batting for the young man, man of character, a good family. I've really been sticking up for him. I know the West has as well. And I think I, th- I actually think he has been a little bit hard done by. I'm not sure exactly what happened, though I have a bit of an idea. But some of the focus was not right, and it's created all sorts of talk quarters. It feels like about a week ago, that game. It was only two <laughs> days ago. Look, I have a, uh, my take on it is that, yes, clearly the ball was touched twice, but I don't think we should ever go and review those. Uh, <sighs> the game's being slowed down as much as, uh, oh. too much as it is, so let's not review every kick. They every happen ki- at- not every kick. No, but you can't review a kick that's... We're talking about a captain's call, yes, captain's okay. challenge. That's different. One captain's oh, yeah, challenge. Okay, so you're happy with that? I'm happy with one captain's challenge. Yeah, like, the, like the NRL. You love NRL. It works yeah. beautifully there. I think the captain's challenge would have to be only in the last quarter, though. Is that only fair? in the last quarter, you reckon? Well, you're not going to review it 50s, earlier because... Only in the 50-metre area. Well... Just in the last quarter. It doesn't have to be in the 50 metre. I just reckon in the last quarter. Because any time, uh, any other time in the game, pretty much, you know, you've got probably the capability of overcoming that. But in the yeah, last yeah. quarter, it's... But that's the captain's call, yeah. obviously, the captain's decision. A bit like cricket. Mm. If you blow all your, you know, your challenges yeah, and you don't have one at the end, that's happened in I many famous I'm seeing cases. fewer reviews on the silly goal, uh, on the goal line, uh, the ones that we know are clear. And I think... These sort of incidents, uh, goal line incidents should be, but I don't think we should review the kick off the boot for a mark, uh, for mm. a shot for goal, as happened at the weekend. I'll tell you one thing. You reckon Frio was stiff. People will forget pretty quickly. Adelaide were cost, basically, yeah. it cost them a spot in the finals last year. Are you, are you comparing blunders? Which was a bigger blunder? Oh, the Adelaide one. Yeah, well, that was a bigger it was, blunder. It was a, a no clear doubt. goal that was not well, reviewed. why are you mentioning so. that? Because that that is a case for the... If there'd been a captain's challenge in yep. there, or captain's call, Correct. Ben Keyes could have said to should uh, have. Jordan Dawson, hey, Dawson, I think we should have a look at this. That's I think what, it was a bloody goal. It's one of the worst things I've seen in footy in the last 20 years, that. It was just absolutely disgraceful. And I think Adelaide handled it with the fair bit of dignity. I, I also, think they handled it wrong now. Yeah, when I'll, you look at how they're going Adelaide? this year, I reckon they handled it wrong. They needed to get their sh- get shitty. They needed to get a chip on mm-hmm. their shoulder. Oh, they needed to go, we've got to stick it up them next year. They just thought they'd go in this year, be the same. They, did, they forgot all the work that they did and how hard they tried to sort of manufacture a brilliant forward line and score goals. And now they're flat. Now they're basically over, 0-4. Hmm. It's it's pretty hard for me. And here. that I, I take it right back to that game. Ben Keyes should have had a goal and it wasn't a goal. Against and this Sydney is why, too, who basically took their spot in the final. No, and this is where why a captain's call is so important. We saw it. Imagine if that happened in a grand final. I know this is the old chestnut and you get sick of hearing it. What if it happened in a grand final? Mm. What if it did happen in a grand final? Well, what happened on the weekend? Well, it sort of has. Uh, there was a Collingwood Brisbane grand final a few years ago where Rocker's goal was not called, yeah. was it behind. So the goal stuff is being sorted yep. because oh, well, score review. Right? Sort of. So now they automatically score review. But the in the general play has never been sorted. And should and it shouldn't be. No, but that's where you use the captain's call. Yeah, one captain's call, yeah. Yeah, so are you, 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 know you the confusing other thing, me? Are you going with the captain's no, call? No, I'm going with one captain's okay, call. Right. The only thing is, Barra, is that footage available instantly? Yeah, I, I heard someone on television say that. that. Mate, I looked at it. I was sitting here watching the game. There was the angle, and they were talking about how it brushed his hair. Yeah. I mean, you could you could see in the normal pay, play that it got, had come off bloody James Ace's hair, and he's got some weird hair, I know, and a, and a headband and all that. <laughs> but you, when you slow mo it, which you can do in the arc or the box or whatever they call it, when you slow mo it and you you zoom in on it, which you can do, because like we're television people, we know how this stuff works. Yep. You can clearly see it hit his forearm. I would find it very hard to believe that they couldn't find the footage and review it within 30, 40 seconds of that happening. Yeah, that's right. Also, would... well, see, where your man, whoever you were listening to, was saying they can't do it and it, that vision didn't appear for a couple of days, he's talking about the front on vision or the behind the goals vision, which you do, you can get later, but you probably could. Get Other fed people in. in the stadium not watching TV said they saw a clear deviation. So clearly the umpires got well, it I wrong. They've Matt admitted they got it wrong. Matt Stevick saw a deviation, yeah. I reckon. Mm. Do you reckon he did? I reckon. I, don't it, know. I can't speak for I, him. Uh, the, the, talking to the Fremantle boys, 
it's there is a suggestion that he said it's touched, or one of the umpires said it was touched, and then the bloke closest sort of overruled him more or less, and there wasn't that discussion between the umpires. There's supposed to be that sort mm. of, you know, they're supposed to come to uh, confer. There was no conferring. Yeah, they clearly got it wrong, and it was very costly for Frio. The one thing about the dissent, now whether, I don't really care whether he uttered the words to the umpire or not, you just can't do it. So it's, it's, he, he'll have to learn from that. And it's a real pity because Jordan Clark should have been remembered for the great game he played on the day, mm. but he won't be. He'll be remembered for that incident on that day. Has had a pretty good season, Jordan Clark, so let's give him that, right? Has had a really good yep, season. Yep. Uh, I reckon he's in all Australian form. So, um, but it well, still is. Well, the needs to be yeah. cleared up because if he was saying, he he could have been saying to him, what did he Doesn't say? Doesn't matter. F and what did Doesn't he say? Doesn't matter. If you're looking at the umpire and you utter those words, which he was, um, now yeah, Justin... Yeah, that needs to be cleared up. If you're saying it to yourself... Mm, still, if you know the umpire I mean? feels that it's I'm being, not saying he said it to him, yeah. so I'm just saying, but if he was... It's not exactly. You're just, you're just going to shut up, thick, Barra. Are they a bit thick, thin-skinned? Oh, you've got that. When I heard it, what it was? What was the F and what was the second part of it? Idiot. F and idiot. Mm. I mean that. That is not exactly a game-changing comment, is it? Well, if and the, that's the second part of it that I wanted to so say. So Jordan to you. says he said it to himself, right? So we'll yeah. we'll, we'll take that. We'll take his well, word. Well, if he on said that. it to himself, it shouldn't have been well, a free kick. Well, yeah, but the umpire doesn't know that at the time, Barra. I've said it to myself. Yeah, but the umpire You've doesn't know that. You said it to yourself that. at work. Do you get in trouble all the time? I know. Yeah, you're not saying but it about I'm your boss here, or your editor. You're and saying I, it about and yourself. And I'm looking at you, right? <laughs> and I'm saying, effing idiot. You're clearly thinking I'm talking to you. Not if you say Jordan. What if I have aggressive eyes? If you say. F an idiot quarters, <laughs> or if I go, F an idiot barra, uh, you're not thinking it's the you're yeah. going to be. You don't think that's you, do you? No. But the the other point I'd like to make is that that penalty is massive. It's uh, who came okay, up? Good call. Instead of going back to the middle and yes. giving him a free kick, they go got to no, be in the middle. It's got to be at an advantage to you know that it's team. It's still a huge in advantage in the middle. Isn't what they're it? saying in case it's in the back line, and then yeah. it's it's not an advantage. So you you bring it forward. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Kennedy. Well, they're why, the rules. Where did they, how did they choose Kennedy to kick it anyway? Well, they're the rules. He was the nearest bloke. But I agree with you. <laughs> I think I think penalty just in the in the centre circle is penalty enough, really. Yeah. You know what gets up my nose, and I and I'm so proud of the deputy premier coming out and having a crack because mm-hmm. oh. she she's a big docker and she understands. And we all understand. A little bit of that, polidia, no, political no, no, none expediency of it, mate. She, there, Where is her purple? Should she get involved? Purple. Oh, oh, absolutely. On. We've got to take them on, all of us. It's yeah, the okay. small state syndrome. Okay. She's seen it in GST negotiations and all the rest of it that they try to do to us. Mm-hmm. This is what happens, mate. You know what? This makes a case for us having a third AFL team here because mm-hmm. we are a pimple on the ass of the AFL at the moment. So you reckon... And we've got no power. So you reckon the this only is a team conspiracy... Mate, I'm telling you how it operates. It's not a conspiracy. The only team with power, any power is West Coast, and they're struggling. Frio has bugger all power, so they can push them around as much as they like. Uh, it's only Fremantle. Don't tell me it wouldn't have been a bigger outcry if Collingwood happened to Collingwood or Carlton. Adelaide's a bit the same. You know, they're not a, Oh, it's been pretty big news. It has been big news but over it's not, East. It, it's not like the end of the world. Could you imagine if it happened to one of the big Yeah, no, choices? I agree with that. And I don't go in for these conspiracy theories. It's not a conspiracy But I've theory. seen it happen to us at West Coast in the early days. Yep. And it happens. And that's why I was talking to our good friend Mark Duffield, and he strongly believes the only way for us to have equal power and to, to get our right desserts in this world in the footy world, is to have a third team. And he's saying, let's go, don't worry about gather round, let's go all in on having a third team, make it down in Bunbury, there's an airport there in Bustleton, all the people down there follow West Coast, so it's not going to affect Fremantle, they'll jump on board, let's spend money there, they can play at Optus, but they're based down in Bunbury, how good would that be? Three teams in Western Australia will have some power. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? The South West no, team. I don't mind a third team. Uh, Adelaide, uh, South Australia has put up his hand as well. Norwood wants to be the third team. I think a third team, however, I think it should be Darwin. I think Northern Territory should get a I team. I think so too, but yep. it won't happen apparently. Mm. They just can't get it organised. They haven't got the dough. So I want to be a truly national competition. It should be the Northern Territory. We prov- they provide a, a, a you know bat way above their uh, average absolutely. in terms of footballers. Apparently, just economically, they can't do it. Tassie's struggling to build now, the stadium. Imagine, yeah, we can get around that. Would Tassie yeah. build a stadium? Yeah, they will. So, so what about Darwin, Northern Territory? 
I don't think so. And no, they just, need air conditioning. The other point that... No, but let's stay on okay. the bum, just because there's a lot of listeners here from, Bunbury, from the yeah. southwest, all right? A lot of friends down there, the southwest. I mean, they've even got a name. I think it's the Southwest Pelicans. No, that was from the Mandurah, the Mandurah people. No, so, I believe that... I believe sorry, that, the uh, Bustleton people. Yeah, Southwest Pelicans. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking maybe Pelicans is not the it's right, right name. New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. Yeah, I know, but I reckon they should go Sharks or something. <laughs> Don't you reckon? Mm, maybe. Southwest Sharks. You don't want to scare people away. It's massive bloody Noah's Pelican's down. Pelican's a beloved creature. Because you can include Albany and all that, couldn't you? Mm. So, What a funny old fella is the pelican. Its mouth holds more food than his belly can. Very good, mate. I was taught that when I was a kid. There's someone said there Lovely, should, isn't it? Somebody said the seagulls. They said, mate, in per, in footy, seagull is a Sandringham derogatory. Sandringham are the seagulls that in is the a, VFL. That is a der, but explain to people, it's a derogatory term. It can be. It means you're hanging out wide yeah, looking does. for a chip. It does, yeah. Mind you, at City Beach, I've seen those bloody... <laughs> Have you seen them go off at City Beach? Have you ever been <laughs> to uh, the south coast of England? They just monster the joy. Mate, they, the seagull. The, the movie The Birds, the Alfred Hitchcock oh, movie. Mate. That is fair to come. I you couldn't know the sleep size, for weeks those, after They're that. like jumbo jets. <laughs> My wife was coming out of a deli with a sandwich, and the <laughs> seagull swooped. I'm not going to call it a seagull. It was just a predator. And it swooped, took the whole sandwich out of her hand. <laughs> Mate, you've got to take your, your tennis racket with you she, and give them the backhand. <laughs> she was also walking a lot. And uh, shortly after she had... That was a joke, had, right? For all bird lovers, that was a joke. Shortly <laughs> after she had the sandwich stolen from her hand, she was she was... She's walking further up the beach, and there was a kid with an ice cream mm. and walking the other way. And she said to the kid, don't go that way. Mate, so Do did. not go that way with your ice cream. They will take you off the ground and fly away with you. Mate, so true. So um, if, you, if, you don't, if you think birds are harmless, have a look at the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. Oh, It'll change your mind. Or just go to the south of England. <laughs> they are huge. Now, listen, City we digress. Uh, just one further point on the Frio situation. Barra, it's also true that the Dockers will take another valuable lesson out of this. As the coach, Justin Longmuir, indicated, the damage was done by the time that double-touch mark was taken and the, well, the, and the descent. But they were still in front, you, oh, no, you but, understand that. But the damage, they could have How killed... How could the damage be done because when Because they leading? should have killed the contest. Oh, I see what you mean. And you're blaming Jackson as well. You, well, it was an aggressive tap. He should have probably hugged it in and forced a stoppage. But not just Jackson. There's plenty of other players. And I think that they should have killed. They've got to be better at killing the smart. contest. Great teams find a way to win. Well, and, they were cheated out of it, mate. Well. Let's not have a crack in them when you get cheated out of it. Well, yeah, cheats are 43 yeah. seconds. They yeah. only had to hold on for 43 seconds. Yeah. But they could, they fight, have, they, could they have held you know on? What? But you're right, they should have killed yeah, the game. You learn, you and learn Luke how to Jackson, do it. even the coach pointed out that Luke Jackson made a mistake there. Josh Cr- Tracy took a mark that should have been a mark earlier on, just, just before that as well, in the same p- passage of play. The umpires didn't give him that. Uh, I don't like to go for the conspiracy stuff, but Jack has a little bit stiff that the umpires exposed him. Though De Koning did a good job, actually. Tom De Koning. Oh, it was a pretty good contest. So Sean, so Sean Darcy... Like two Olympic athletes, wasn't it? They're such athletic, big so boys. So does Darcy come straight in then? Uh, so Justin Longmuir was asked about this uh, on ABC Radio last night, and he he said he's got a few boxes to tick still. Oh, my gut feel is that there'll be another, they'll wait another week. That's my don't, gut don't feel. Don't bring him in against... That's my gut feel. But that, that midfield that they're playing against... Yeah. You know, and Soldo's given him a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a great midfield. Uh, look, the other point that we should raise, uh, and Justin Lomu has raised, they've sent some clippings to the AFL on the treatment of Jai Amos from that Carlton game. So, oh, Weedering yeah. played on him. Mitch McGovern was getting across as well. So, kick 1-1 one, one from four disposals. And clearly, that's what happens when you're a key forward. It's almost really? a sign of respect. Well, it is. That, is, that, is that, so, they're saying unfairly treated? Uh, well, they haven't sent them um, clippings uh, just for I'll no reason. I've been taking marks. <laughs> well, of him probably getting his arms chopped and what have you. So wow. they've just asked for some clarity Good ahead stuff. of this week's That's game. That's what you've so. got to do, mate. Well. You've got to push back. You've got to keep throwing it up. That's how West Coast got through. They just went... Mate, cop this. We're not copping it anymore. And now, that's why I like what Reedy was doing. Hey, before you go yep. on, mate, are you good for a loan? Uh, never. I reckon you're good for a mate, loan Mate, I'm now. just a battling journalist. No, don't give me that crap. Just a battler. Mate, I read that you've got a new show on the ABC at uh, night. Yes, on, yes, on Tuesday mate, nights. You're not getting, I'll be on tonight. You're doing that actually. for free, are you? For um, meagre compensation. Oh, you're talking to me now. 
So, mate, how many nights a week is that? Just a night. Just a, I work. For, I do some stuff for them on a Saturday morning. So you're getting paid so much, you only had to do one night. I get paid too much. You could mate. have done it's the just, whole week. Uh, it's just great to be working. Who else is on there? Uh, Clint Wilden. Yeah, great man. Sharon Willingham. Sharon, very good, very great good. Great fella. And, yeah. you know, high footy IQ, um, West Coast Eagles player, Collingwood Premiership player. Mm. Yep. And so that's... That's on uh, Saturday Mitch, mornings. Mitch is, and then during the week, Mitch Turner, yeah. uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. Yeah. Well, that's good. Six mm. to seven, is it? Yeah, seven to eight. On the ABC. On the ABC. Is it live or is it... Local radio it, live. Are you pretending it's live? Live. Bullshit. It you is live. Oh, you're not going to go in there at seven, eh? Yes, I am. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Money bags. Well done. Money bags? Good darts, mate. Oh, please. You're on your way. Oh, please. See don't, what happens when you jump in the that. barrow on a podcast? Oh, He's just fly. Oh, oh. I've helped Daniels, Zemplis. Yeah. Cousins. Well, I still wait Amberley. for the help, mate. <laughs> I'm still a You're battler. You're on your way, mate. Just You've got your own show. Battler from the northern suburbs, <laughs> mate. Uh, look, we've spoken about Frio. What about West Coast? So a much better performance. Took it right up to Sydney. Uh, everybody waxing lyrically about Harley Reid, and it was a great performance from Harley Reid, but I thought uh, Jeremy McGovern's performance was really mm. telling too. They tried to get Haywood on him to sort of halve his contest, but uh, he found a way to break through, and he's been in really, really good form this year, Jeremy McGovern, which is a good effort given very interrupted season last year and just shows you his value to the team. So it Good was a, effort handing was, out over his teeth as well. Yeah, and two teeth. Old days. Two teeth. <laughs> And had the mouth guard in, is that right? Or didn't it have doesn't one wear in? the mouth yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's well, a lesson for you of. kids. Yeah, that's that's for concussion reasons you should wear the mouth guard. I wonder why he doesn't. Probably well, breathing. Well, the, the IQ mouth guards who, who they give you data. Mm. But apart from that, they're not going to prevent concussion, a mouth guard. Yeah, that's what absorbs the the uh, the, 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 the actual, you know, the, the concussion, the... Mm. Pfft, it goes into your mouth guard. That's why you wear your mouth guard. Yeah. And for your teeth. Mm-hmm. Seriously, okay. uh, what do you think boxers wear them for? Well, I'm still <laughs> dubious over it. But concussion is concussion. There's not much you can do about it. No, there's not much. But mouth, I, I can tell you from first-hand experience, mouth guards, if you get a big mouth I guard. always wore one. Really helps. The other bloke we need to mention is Elliot Yo. Yep. If if they if the Eagles were going all right, he would be talked about in dispatches all over the shop. It has started the year well. Mate, yeah. he'd be like Brownlow contention. That was he was absolutely. What was his stats? Twenty eight disposals, nine inside fifties, and eight tackles. He was he was almost they almost gave him best on ground mm. in a losing team. And McGovern twenty six, eight rebound fifties, fantastic. And while they stood they stood tall in the centre clearances too, um, but the Swans then doubled them at stoppage clearances. So they got the ball out of the middle, but then around the ground they struggled. And now I wanted to take. I wanted to take umbrage with some coverage about, well, f- firstly, Harley Reid, probably a bit stiff not to be rising star. Your paper was very supportive. Uh, yeah. Um, Darcy was pretty go good. Your own Darcy kicked three goals. Yeah, but you didn't use, what's, what's the back page say? Yeah, well, I didn't do the back page. Oh, didn't but the back I, page. I do, I, Harley Reid has to be nominated for yeah, the rising star. Yeah. You didn't have any input. But you've got, there's a few weeks ahead. He can still be nominated. Ripped off or something. Wasn't oh, it? yeah, but. Overlooked or. Yeah, snubbed. Snubbed. Mm. Yeah. So you're going with a snub? Play, he did. He drove that team at the weekend. It was just a pretty good yeah. effort. But don't uh, underestimate Darcy's performance. Three goals. He's no, just I was contributed. Just following the West. Look, mm-hmm. I can tell you. So you think he should have been the rising star this week? Well, the significance of the pressure that's on him and the fact that I was delivered like that, the fact that he had seven, broke seven oh, tackles. Yeah, it's yeah, it amazing, broke wasn't seven it? in one game. Yeah. Like, it's hard for people to understand yes, I'll tell you this. what, when he puts four quarters together. Mate, because the tackling in the AFL is phenomenal. Mm. It's like rugby league now almost. Not, well, that's a big start. It's not as and good as rugby And when you think about adjusting to the pace of the game but as to well, break he's seven done a good tackles, job. And it's the second highest all time, just behind Dusty Martin and LDU, who had eight tackles in a game. Uh, broke, broke eight, eight, tackles, broke eight yeah. tackles. So it was. they probably didn't look at those stats. And he'll get nominated. But what I was going to say was, I can't believe... Some of the Victorians are still saying that after three years he'll leave, he won't extend his contract, he won't be happy here. Did they see him kick that goal and then grab his jumper and the logo and go, look, here, here. What do you think he's saying there? What do you think he's doing by pulling the logo like that? Where's the camera? Pulling he's the saying, logo, I love the camera you, going, Eagles. That's what he's oh, saying. I'm f- 
<laughs> staying. That's what he's saying, mate. I'm not going nowhere. I love this joint. How good is this? I know my girlfriend's Victorian and she's uh, a Dersma or whatever, but I love this place and I'm, I'm, I'm here to be counted. I mean, that's a massive statement. It is. I think that's been overlooked. I'm surprised that hasn't been made more, more of. The, to me, as a footballer, that just said that bloke is invested in this joint. He wants to lead us out of this pooparama we're in at the moment. Uh, we, I think it was covered in the West on Monday morning. Um, yeah. Oh, but there yeah. was an event in the Freo game that, get probably, in that the West. probably swamped it. <laughs> yeah, Harley that's Reed, right. Yeah. yeah. But that photo should be plastered everywhere. And you know who ran in? The two kids ran in. Jinby and uh, Campbell Chesser. So that'll be... Surely, if you're listening, Eagles social media, get hold of that. So what did Start you, pushing that around. What did you make of the overall gather round? Yeah, okay, I'll concede. Uh, and there's no brown water, I believe. I asked about the brown mm-hmm. water. Ryan Daniels said didn't see any brown water mm-hmm. coming out of the taps. Mm-hmm. Is that is that he a He might have been, he'd be drinking the Evian from the bottle, <laughs> they, knowing Rhino. Have they cleared it up? Or at the know. Hilton... Penthouse, you reckon they don't have that no, any no, problem? Just, see, I'm a battler the from the northern suburbs. I just have to go out and stay in backpackers joints. <laughs> so I'd say the back. They've done a good job. What about them now? Kick. What about the Premier? Here, here's a quote. He goes, uh, what's his name? Malinowskis. Peter Malinowskis. He went large. He said, the gather round Barossa announcement, because they're going out to the Barossa. Two games in Barossa next Which year. It does sound pretty good, I've got yeah. to say. I hate to admit it. He called the gather round the most attractive major event in the nation. Oh, please. <laughs> I said, someone ring him up and goes, He's not, he is Prix? known for hyperbole, Barra, <laughs> this bloke. Have you heard of State of Origin? Good on him. Have you heard of the Australian Open? Oh, please. <laughs> please. Yeah, no, I don't think it's quite don't got go the Australian Open yet. Going out to vineyard and having a game is not going to... So, hey, by the way, Barra, they've got, the, they've got it for three years, so they've got it for the next two years, so it ain't going it. nowhere it. for... T- no, they sh- doesn't mean it should you should happen, have... But no, they, they should not. Mate, it's a living certainty. No, it's not a living certainty. <laughs> WA is going pretty hard at this. WA is every chance. It'll be 40 mil by the time we have to Just have because you've done it well doesn't mean another state can't do it even better. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying... Well, Are I'm you actually, suggesting we wouldn't be up to it? No, I'm, what I'm saying is it's going to be 40 mil. I'm not sure we want to pay 40 mil. We'll make 80 or 100, but 40 is a big price. You you look at what the wrestling make was. Make about 85 coming back. Yeah, I, know, I just said that, but yeah. I'm just saying... For one year it won't be. You look at what... The, the cost of the UFC or WrestleMania or the Italian teams coming, it's not its not that much money. You know what I mean? That's a big amount of money, 40 mil, to get something like this over here. Having said that, I was talking to the Lord Mayor during the week and he agrees with me that the, it would be spectacular if that's precinct. Oh, the Lord Mayor's big on it. Oh, the precinct there. It's made for it. And he's hes only up to the river. so only, He only gets the whacker part of it. Of course, that precinct Wacker Optus. Mm-hmm. So he, that's not his area, the Optus area. Oh, but the, the Wacker area, area, he's very excited about yeah. the Wacker being completed. You know, maybe that'll. But force it's not the, about the it's where the games played. It's about the whole community and the the, the state buying in. Yeah, but, but that's part of the charm of Adelaide, isn't that why they've killed it? They've got all those provincial grounds. You go out there. So you got those here. Ten thousand. Yeah, but we're not going. I think I think us would be Wacker Optus. <laughs> All around that area. Yeah. Spectacular. You might be able to squeeze one in somewhere else. And then I still am big on a game in Bunbury because you open up that whole Bustleton. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and direct then start flights. push for By a the third way, team. just on that, I don't buy this nonsense about, oh, people won't be able to afford. Mate, we may as well not have go for any events if that's the argument. Well, you mean they won't fly in? Of course the they will. Uh, I think... The argument it is that Adelaide is ideally suited because it's so close to everyone there and it's on the East Coast. Not, It's not so much they won't come here. It's just it'd be a lot easier going to bloody Adelaide, wouldn't it? Another hour and a half, Vic, two hours on a plane. That's the, all it is. A lot of the Vicks can drive Have down. another couple of... Collingwood fans GNTs can get, can, on the plane. It's all right. Yeah, well, but, that, but Collingwood fans ain't getting GNTs on a plane. They're going, driving their car or getting a bus down to Adelaide, aren't they? Yeah. So that's the great thing. 18 Still teams a fair drive. here. 18 teams yeah, 10 in hours. Perth. All the hotels, every hotel has a team. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, all the by play between all the fans. We can do that here. But I, I think, I reckon they're going to lock it away in Adelaide for the for permanently. In, nah, in well, South that would Australia. be a disgrace. Yeah, I agree. That would be a disgrace. Are you going to mention um, Finlayson? 
Yes, we should. Well, they are. Frio is playing Port Adelaide this weekend, so we should. So Finlayson um, put his hand up and said, yep, uttered a homophobic slur in their game last weekend. Of course, we saw Alistair Clarkson uh, cop a two-game suspended sentence and a fine just recently for also uttering a homophobic slur. So have they made a right? Is it is double that a precedent? Absolutely, they have. So how can they? They'll suspend him. He has sure. to be suspended. He's a living certainty. But to get what suspended. happens with the Clarkson one now? It's, it's double know. standards. That's what I mean. That's exactly. Does that not ex- suggest it's a boys' club? Yeah, Victorian boys' club. Mm-hmm. Victorian boys' club as well. And where are we? We're in Western Australia. So I don't well, think they can let back. it go. They can't let it go. So he'll cop a week minimum. Some saying three to four. I think you cop a week. I reckon it's a week. I think a week. And I mean, there's pretty important player to them too. With the AFL and AFLW, there's a massive gay uh, community following of the sport. Okay, now so, and it's things like this. It's the reason that no players ever come out, which was which is you know. How has that happened over the journey that there's never been someone who's come out and said, yeah, I'm living a gay life? So what should happen is it should be an en masse outing. They should get a dozen players Mm. or so together and say, let's all come out together. Take the pressure off so you're not the first. The stigma isn't attached to you as the first. You don't mean don't you, stig- think- you don't mean stigma. You mean something else. Don't no, you? no. So it's not because you will be if there's a dozen of a dozen come out. It's it's much less pressure yeah. than one coming less, out. Less publicity. Yeah, that's mean, right. Don't you? Yeah, like Ian Roberts. Don't you think that's a, a, yeah, a good I, way to I, approach it? I think it? we kind of have to leave it up to the people. It's we can't we can't say you must come out. You no, know what I mean? Not like, saying, I'm not saying it's that. up to them. But um, it is just surprising that over the journey. And that's why this So is, do you think this was uttered as a... Uh, oh, was clearly. It just the t- that's why you can't just, use that language. Yeah. So I say to my son, do you just say that to your son? Don't use that word, you know, the worst word mm-hmm. that he always uses, that they always use young people. Now, they, you know how we say mate? Yeah. They use that, okay. see you next Tuesday, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like as a, as a, as a thing of affection. I'm going, mm-hmm. that's a, you can't say that. And because that'll come out in the wrong place. And that's the same as... If you and me are messing around and we're punching on a wrestling or something and I call you something, I shouldn't do that because that will come out and it, like it would in that circumstance, like in footy, under what, pressure. What do you, do you, I just get bro all the time from my two boys. Bro, I say, I'm you? not your bro. I'm yeah. your dad. Yeah. Hey, bro, can you – and I say, what, what do you call me bro for? It's hard to understand them. What about when they come out with <laughs> – it's a bit meh. Is it meh? No, I haven't heard that one. Is, that, is it meh? It's meh, isn't it? A bit meh. What, and what I go, that What mean? the hell does that mean? It means it's crapola. Okay. It's a bit mi- mi- oh, I, Anyway, me and Nick Nat knew. We've got no idea what the kids are talking about. That's why Nick retired. But it is important that they make a statement on Finlayson. Clearly, he was just I agree. F- shooting his gob off. And under pressure, uh, in the heat of the battle, you do say some silly things. So don't just don't use that language. You know you can't fat shame either. So I couldn't say you... Fat yeah, fair enough. So-and-so. That's fair. On a footy field. Yeah. If, Nor the, should... blo- if the bloke complained... He could go to the ump and say, hey, he called me fat. Now, in Not the old you days, say. you'd start laughing about that. <laughs> but, mm. but nowadays, you can't do that. Because you, you can't hurt their feelings, basically. You know what I mean? If it's not related to football, then you don't yeah. say it. Yeah, so we can go a bit far on this whole thing, I, I suspect. Yeah, but, I'd agree with that. So Scotty, but there are certain areas that are no-go zones, and see, clearly at the oh, weekend yeah. we Religion, saw one. Racial, and he's put his hand up. Sexual. I think he, the fact that he's put his hand up, he's shown contrition from the outset. He apologised at well. three-quarter time, handled it well. I think a week would put a statement out there, but it still smacks of double standards by the AFL, in my opinion. Mm. Um, but they can't not act on it. They have to act on it. So we'll see how that plays out this week. Do you say you can't even give the weights of players anymore? Give the what, sorry? The weights of players. You can't even... No, can't they're not, no longer that. in the AFL guide. Yeah. Were they of any use, those weights? Yeah, I was interested to know, yeah, okay. like, how strong... Because some big. of them were... A lot and of them especially were... Especially when they put on weight. They started were they 67. accurate, though? Yeah, well, that's another debate. I, I reckon Scotty Cummings would love to play nowadays. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, now, just before we get on to some mail, let's just, just scan our eyes over the rest of the round. Collingwood Hawthorne Barra. Uh, my boys came very, very close. And um, I did get a few uh, texts from Collingwood supporters at half time, Barra. And uh, let's just say they were very, very, very quiet in the second half. Oh, as yeah. Hawthorne stormed up. Game of two halves. I wasn't wasn't it? convinced by Collingwood, I've got to be, it's got to be said. Uh, great, 
great byplay too with Jack Ginnivan. I thought the stuff was fantastic. Interesting comments from the coach after the game too. Sam Mitchell saying, Jack Ginnivan, um, he's done everything we've asked of him. Just keep doing what you're doing. So, look, it's, it's, I think it's pretty entertaining for footy. And there was nothing nasty in it, Barra. It was just good theatre. Uh, Collingwood... They just haven't got that bite off half back, have they? They no. just don't. Well, not look the second like... half. First half, they looked fine, yeah, but then but... they just faded. It was so weird. Dugowie had a great game, 31 disposals yep. and a goal, 17. Josh Dacos was back to his best. So maybe they're. T- hey, what did you think? Hey, what did you see? <laughs> did you see Jordan Dugowie clean? Yeah, I did. Darcy Cameron's nose. I did, nose. yeah. Had the blood on the nose, and you saw the tattooed hand come down and wipe the blood off. So so they're on the ground. It was he's late be- in the game, too. Darcy's been whacked in the nose, obviously. Yeah. He's bleeding. He doesn't want him to get sent off for the blood rule. So <laughs> Dugowie takes it upon himself to clean his nose. <laughs> to clean Darcy's nose. But, but that, I've never seen anything like it. Mm. Would you touch other people's blood? No. Unless it's your own kids or no. something? You, no. No way. Not nowadays. Plus a snotty nose as well. Yeah. I thought, and they've now the AFL's asked for an explanation. Yeah, well, fair enough. What do they need to be explained? Well, what can they do, though? Yeah, well, what, what's well, the I explanation? Guess, I guess what they're saying is... obvious. Yeah, but I guess what they're saying is don't do this. So they have to ask for an explanation. It's just, it's a way of saying don't do this again. He was anyway. bleeding and I wiped his nose. <laughs> uh, He'll uh, just say I wasn't gonna aware... Your man, Jai Newcomb, is back to his best, uh, Well, too. he was. Yeah, he was very that was good. good. Jack and Scrimshaw. what did you think of Blake Hardwick, forward and four goals? Yeah. It's interesting, too. Uh, I've got uh, it. Uh, before you go on, yep. I just loved how they called it Jack Ginnivan's Hawks. <laughs> He's been there two seconds. He has. <laughs> Look, um, the other interesting game was St Kilda Richmond. One goal to half time and managed to get the job done, St Kilda. So, uh, you know, still um, two wins, two losses, still very much uh, in there, St Kilda. Well, the Saints, did you see those quotes from Ross Lyon? He goes, he thought some aliens had taken over his team in the first first half. half. Who are these blokes? Where have they come from? Uh, GWS Gold Coast. I thought this was almost the game of the round. I know Frio Carlton was, but gee, it was a good game. And um, they're they're right up there, Gold Coast, now. I think GWS is the team to beat, in my opinion, to GWS and Melbourne. But... um, Mate, didn't you say it was going to be an all-Sydney grand final last week? I said it was looking like that. (laughs) How would you changed already? But Matt Rao, what a star. He, yes, 89% he efficiency with his disposals. What about Toby Green, another five? Yeah. Let me just give his stats. 26 disposals. This is Matt Rao. Mm-hmm. 89% efficiency, 19 contested possessions, eight clearances and a goal. Have Mate. you seen a bloke what a get out of a – you talk about Harley Reid shrugging tackles. What about Rao in close in that contested situation? Mm-hmm. Just – Finding a way to get that handball out. It's unbelievable. You just love blokes. like When you're playing, you just follow blokes like that around. Because yeah. you know he's going to get it and you get on the end of it. The, o- other, the orange uh, tsunami, just before, yep. we should mention Stephen Cornelio, yep. probably their best. And Toby Green starting to peak, five goals. Yep. And Jesse Hogan just keeps on keeping on. Yep. So uh, they're, they're the team to beat, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, I just want to raise a couple of other things. Uh, the Western Bulldogs and Geelong. Geelong's now won 18 of 21 and four of the last five against um, uh, the Western Bulldogs. They just they just can't get the job done, the dogs. So I think they're going to be one of those sides sort of fighting it out for the bottom end of the eight right now. And Aaron Norton um, has sort of roles changed a bit, Barry. It doesn't seem to be the player they target now. It seems to be the player who really is, is more of a, a goal assist player now. You're so right. And can I ask you this? Mm-hmm. Are the old cats back? Not just the 2022 ones. Yeah, I'll tell you what, well, I have to concede they're looking pretty good, aren't they? Oh, for six day I didn't break even have them in five, the eight. Five-day break. You had them just mm. plummeting. Mm, I did. I, I saw you. It's plummeting. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair word. Yeah, I did say that. And Grian Myers, you've underestimated him, haven't you? Well, I didn't, I didn't mention Brian Myers. <laughs> That's Myers, what Barry. I mean. He's the number one player <laughs> for goal assists. And they call him the Messi of St. Mary's. Best on ground, according Saint to Mary's, the which is the Geelong Football League team. Jeremy Cameron. How did you overlook Jeremy Cameron, mate? 27 I didn't overlook him. Yeah, well, you, when, you, when you shit-canned him, how did you overlook him? Well, I thought that they'd be getting a bit older. <laughs> so, I, you're I right think, about Tom Hawkins. Yeah. He only had six disposals. And Liam Jones. But they still got Dangerfield and Guthrie to come back. Can they challenge for the flag? Well, they clearly can. They're four and zip, so they're not my pick. So you got them challenging now. Still for not the my flag. pick. Well, clearly the <laughs> latter suggests they can. But they're not my you pick. Had them 12th. They're not my pick. Didn't you have them 12th? Well, let's see. It's only 
mate. It's round, what is it, round five? Don't you hate doing tipping? Pre-season. Oh, well, I think most of us got nine at the weekend, didn't oh, we? Oh, yeah. Well, you shouldn't have. Before we... Mate, you that was a ripped, You ripped me off. I tipped Fremantle. Mm-hmm. Should've, mate, oh, clearly, Fremantle should have won. Why is it so my you, fault? Well, because you got nine, I got eight. I mean, it's not right, mate. Well, do you want me to hand you back one? I, I just want it's you to not how it works, that, mate. Carlton ain't going to hand Freo back no, to four It's not points. a real nine. It's a pretend nine. Is it? Okay. Just like it was a pretend win by Carlton. Okay. Um, just one one other thing I want to mention before we get on to some mail is the Sydney Swans and um, Isaac Heaney. Is yeah. he Brownlow clear favourite now for the Brownlow? He's got he's sixteen votes clear in the coaches' votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he polls in every game. It'll be interesting to see who gets three votes. Will it be three votes Sydney Swans Isaac Heaney mm-hmm. or three votes Sydney Swans Errol Goulden, who was. 27 disposals, two goals, 773 yes. metres. Who was on him? Like, honestly, who mm. was on him? I mean, the, the eggs the eggs did well. You'd think Yoey would get a vote as the, as the one vote, but it'd be out of those two. You're spot on, mate. Hey, did you mention did you mention Richmond? Uh, so, I did mention St Kilda and Richmond. Why? So just because they're playing West Coast. So did, if West Coast lose this week, it's the worst start to a season they've had. So they'd be five zip or zip five. I reckon they're. I reckon they're a big chance to win. So no Lynch, no Noah Bolter. Mm-hmm. Baker uh, comes back though. Baker comes back. And Dusty was super. Yeah. Even though there's rumours they, that they he... look pretty good, Richmond. Really, they've been the best team. Would you be tipping them? Sorry, Mister. Will immoral, I be tipping Richmond tip, this week? Immoral, immoral nine last week. Are you saying Were you tipping them? Well, let's wait till Morally, Thursday. Morally, I got nine. Let's wait till Thursday. Okay. Well, Dusty, there's a rumour Dusty's threatening to walk away from the game. That Richmond's having to talk him around, saying, "Mate, hang on, you need nine games for three hundred. Hang on, hang on." He hangs on for three hundred, doesn't he? He had thirty disposals, but he didn't look like Dusty of old. Well, he wouldn't. He's six, getting, getting a bit older. Six inside fifties. T- Taranto was good, but they just got who can stop Shea Bolton? Yeah, he's a good player, isn't he? Nineteen disposals, four Tom goals. Cole. He'll have fifty of his family at Optus. Um, geez, it'd be good if he was playing here. Who? Who's it? Tom Cole or? Yeah. Possibly. Or, or the other fellow, the other, the young bloke. The, um, the young defender. Yeah, Brady Hoff. Yeah, I reckon Hoff. Yeah, he does a good job. They just got to stop. If they stop Bolton, they win, I reckon. Seriously. That's how important he is. Daniel Rioli wasn't bad either. Yeah, that's a fair call. Yeah. Hey, Barron, now it's time for this. Saddle up your camel. It's time for the Thirsty Camel Mailbag. Thank you to our long-time sponsor, Thirsty Camel. Jim Beam White, 4.8%, only $44.99 for a 10-pack. A great special this week. This week, we have a $50 gift voucher to give away thanks to Thirsty Camel. Get your questions in to Quarters and Barra at wanews.com.au. Please keep them short. Before I go on, Barra, I should mention mm. the game tipping competition. As you said, I got nine, you got eight. John Connell was our winner this week with nine correct and a margin of eight. Jack Carrington-Jones, 30 in total, is the overall leader with 116 margin. And did I say that I got nine and you got eight? Yes, I did. Uh, On to the mail this week. This one from Zach from Margaret River. Hey, fellas, love the Eagles' throwback jumpers on the weekend. Mm. In my opinion, the Navy always looked tougher than the Royal Blue. Do you agree? If so, might this have somehow contributed to their improved contest around the ball? Not sure about that, but I do agree on the jumper. Absolutely. That oh, that Navy, I wonder why they got rid of that Navy, because they always go back to the other blue. Have made some curious decisions over the years. Yeah. The ochre. Remember the, the ochre, budgie? Oh. The ochre jumper. The budgie. Apparently it sold, it sold well, though. Did it? The kids loved the ochre jumper. Okay, the budgie. That's what you have to do. But I can remember Ash McIntosh and, you know, champions of the past wearing that jumper, and maybe it did inspire the boys a bit. It certainly looked good, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, Andrew writes, Hi, Quarters and Barry, you have convinced me... I. Two, don't want to go to Adelaide CBD. You should both audition for travel guides. Uh, Connor writes, hey, guys, reserving my whinge regarding Frio's weekend for another topic that demands greater spotlight. The AFL set a dangerous and disappointing precedent with Clarkson's homophobic slur earlier in the year. And now with Jeremy Finlayson's alleged words, the AFL needs to have a good look at itself. Discrimination is discrimination, no matter the group, and offenders must be treated and punished accordingly. Clearly, the AFL has a problem with homophobia. Zero AFL players have come out publicly, despite tens of current... Sorry... 
Uh, despite former players being members of the, the LGBTQI plus community, the AFL is a relic of the past and continues to excuse poor behaviour having a negative influence from the top down. Unfortunately, I can't help but believe the AFL would treat this differently if it were racism or sexism. Uh, that's from Connor. That's a very good email, Connor. Um, I do believe they will uh, come down and suspend Finlayson for one week. I think he has come out. He's quite contrite. Uh, we did address this earlier. Mm. So let's just see how the week plays mm-hmm. out. Uh, this is from Jared, who calls himself the Pilbara Peanut Barra. G'day, <laughs> gents. It. Although Fremantle had plenty of opportunities to seal the game before the contentious touch ball debacle, let's call it a double touch, by the way, on Saturday, the call still look, took the game away from them. Joey Montagna suggested on the first crack that there should be a captain's challenge brought in, as in the NRL or DRS in cricket. As it is currently, the AFL seems happy enough to waste time for unnecessary long score reviews. He's right about that. So I'd be happy enough with a hold-up of this type, especially if it's match-defining thoughts. Um, well, we discussed it earlier. I think we're both on the same page, Barra. One captain's call. Yeah, and I, I mean, uh, it, the bigger ground, it's different from rugby league because it's in your face. It's right there. You can make the call easy. The captain's right there. If Pierce was playing, if he's a full forward on the weekend... Uh, what would have happened? They would have had to call him down, maybe, or maybe it can be another designated, nominated player. He looked than the pretty relaxed. He looked uh, when, when he, he went in to have a discussion with the umpire at the end. Looked at Jordan and said, "Hang on, mate, I got this." I but thought no, he what, handled it pretty well. But what I was saying was, is that if it's a captain's challenge, that he would have been right there and made a captain's challenge, no mm-hmm. doubt. But if he was playing at full forward, like 120, yeah, how, do you, how do you get around so that? That's the only thing. So. Uh, maybe so one per game maybe anybody can refer or maybe there's nominated players in every area I don't know because that's the only difficulty the game is different from NRL Mm. because the game's so big and maybe you're right maybe it is just in the last quarter or incidents within 50 Um, and, and you do I like the tactics of NRL how they do use it tactically sometimes and it creates a bit of you know but should it be used tactically yeah well Maybe that's part of the game. That has to slow the game down. And it's only one time, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. The so. Ball, and it has to be only when there's a whistle, when there's a stoppage. So it's a free kick or a mark. If you play on, you can't go, hang on, you missed that. You can't do it but, then. By the way, the AFL have come out and said it's not on our agenda at the moment. It won't be happening anytime soon. Yeah, and that's what they said about the goal thing too. Until the 2009 grand final, Tom Hawkins hits the post. The um, goal umpire misses it, gives it as a goal. And guess what? Geelong wins the premiership mm-hmm. and St Kilda get heart and broken. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Straight Happened with Collingwood against Wexley. Brisbane, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, but that was a grand final, mm. as we so always say. So was the Collingwood-Brisbane one? Yeah, but that was clear cut, wasn't it, in the end? Who was going? Oh, you're talking about Rocker? Yeah. Yeah, Rocker could possibly as well. But this one was the famous one. That's what changed the game. And guess what? The next week they went, yeah, we're bringing in score review. Mm. Okay, you're right. Yeah, exactly right. The only thing is it does do, – do you, do you, do you, the ones that are meaningless, just – just get the ball back into the set. They're meant to be reviewing as they're taking the ball back to the centre. But a lot of the time it drags on and it's just, it's ugly for the, the game, bloke, I reckon. The bloke up in the box, yeah. a bit slow. Yeah. yeah, you need to have an expert. Someone from Channel 7 who watches Vision all the yep. time and just yep. go bang. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Agree. Zoom in. Agree. You have been listening to Quarters and Barra. We have been brought to you by Tab Touch. Got the touch down. Load the Tab Touch app today. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Thank you, Barra. Thank you for listening. We will be back on Thursday to cast our eyes over the next round of football.